Howdy there once again, YouTube. Looks like it's snowing. Oh, man. Don't I wish it's snown here in Washington State. But apparently it's like 50 degrees outside, I think, right now. And it's almost December. Yeah, it's really warm in Washington. But other places that are usually warm during this time period are getting snow. So it's just so weird. My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I am a beginner amateur seismologist who hopes to make a career out of it someday. I do have my own website to teach you how easy it is to find seismic data and analyze it, among many other things. So please go check it out at https colon slash slash monitorseis.weebly.com. Also, please go check out Scott's brand new channel called the NW Geology Guy. He has some really great videos recently, especially about the Seattle Fault Line and the past volcanic activity in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. There was volcanic activity, um, kind of recent in geo uh, geological time, down in Portland, Oregon. Isn't that crazy? Seismicity has been getting pretty weird. In my past video, I talked about the recent 4.1 earthquake that struck at about 37 kilometers in depth or so underneath the Olympic Peninsula in my home state of Washington. It was also followed by a magnitude 1.3 aftershock some 50 minutes later, and then about 12 hours or so later, I don't know the exact number, there was a magnitude 2.1 just west of Seattle. Also, a lot of tectonic tremor was spotted during this time period on the real-time tremor map. Now what does this mean? Apparently the Seattle Fault has not had a major earthquake for over a thousand years. Could it be building towards another major earthquake? It might be, since I do not believe that the Seattle Fault is dead. I'm pretty sure it's still pretty active. However, my field is more in seismology than geology. Also, there was a large 4.1 earthquake in northwest Idaho, which seemed more like a magnitude 4.5, and a pretty deep 5.7 earthquake under one of the volcanoes next to the Redoubt Volcano in Alaska. I'll talk about that in just a second. Here we are at volcanoes.usgs.gov at the hazard map, and we have a new hazard uh, level that has been raised for uh, the Vinyaminov volcano in Alaska. So let's click on that, go to the volcano page. Here we are at the uh, volcano page for the Alaska Volcano Observatory for Vinyaminov. They just raised it on the 21st, so just yesterday, guys, they raised it to red warning and i had a feeling i didn't say that this was going to happen specifically but i did have a feeling that this was sort of going to happen because the harmonic tremor volcanic tremor episodes were just they're they were continuing guys they've been almost constant since september and they've just been continuing and continuing so remember how i did a video on the harmonic and non-harmonic tremor that has been occurring at the vinyaminov volcano in alaska well activity has increased significantly Ash plumes are being generated to about 13,000 to 15,000 feet and drifting up to about 100 miles or so to the southeast. Now that's not, not as major as what this volcano can produce. This volcano can produce some massive eruptions, guys. But we haven't seen that for a while. Now, of course, the ash plumes are nowhere near large enough to rain ash in Washington and Oregon State. But activity has greatly increased in just the past few days. Is this just a normal eruptive cycle? Or could a major eruption be approaching? Who knows? However, while activity was increasing, there was a very large 5.7 earthquake that struck pretty deep, not near Vinyaminov. It was more like it was right here, near uh, the Iliamna volcano and the Redoubt volcano. So it wasn't near this, but it seemed to happen around the same exact time. This volcano started increasing significantly right around the time that the 5.7 occurred. So maybe it is related. I don't know. I will talk about that in a bit, but first let me read this update. Alright, overnight, ash emissions from Vinyaminov increased significantly, generating a plume up to 15,000 feet ACL, ASL, sorry, and extending for more than 150 miles to the southeast. This morning, observers in Perryville and webcam views indicated continuous ash emissions. This activity is a significant increase from the past month, and AVO is raising the aviation color code to red and the volcano alert level to warning, which means this is probably just getting started and a lot larger eruptions are probably approaching for this volcano wouldn't be surprised let's go to yesterday's report real quick these are for all of, uh, the volcanoes currently in unrest in Alaska but let's go to Vinyaminov right here seismic activity has remained elevated in the past 24 hours and ramped up around 8 UTC before falling slightly throughout the day today but by 11.43 UTC, an ash plume was observed in satellite data extending 80 miles to the southeast with maximum height estimated at about 13,000 feet ASL. This plume continued to develop throughout the night, extending to over 150 miles, probably to the southeast. In response, the National Weather Service issued a SIGMET, 
Clear webcam views in the morning indicated continued ash emissions to the southeast, and a second plume developed extending over 120 miles to the southeast. A pilot report from the morning indicated that the ash cloud was below 10,000 feet. In response to the increase of activity, the color code and alert level was raised to red warning. Ash forecasts suggest a possible shift to northerly winds overnight tonight that may result in ash impacts on the community of Perryville, and the National Weather Service has issued an advisory for trace to minor ash fall. No satellite observations of thermal anomalies associated with the continued lava flow were observed in the last 24 hours, but signatures could be obscured by increased ash emissions or cloud cover. It seems it, it's possible the lava flow has stopped, because they were having some good-sized lava fountains, guys. Because uh, uh, September 2018, just a few months ago, was when all this activity started. And just recently, they had some lava flows and some lava fountains, and now they're having large ash eruptions. And the harmonic tremor and volcanic tremor episodes are not stopping, guys. It's not stopping. So I'm thinking that it is building to an even larger eruption. Maybe a Mount St. Helens-style eruption? I don't know. Remember, Mount St. Helens was what? That was a VEI-5, right? I think Mount St. Helens was a VEI-5. Pinatubo in the early 90s was a... What was that? VEI-6? I'm pretty sure. So activity has increased. So why don't we take a real quick look at the recent seismic data for the past two days for Vinyaminov. Let me go here to the Iris MDA map real quick. And let's go to Network AV. Let's update the map and go to Vinyaminov. Now, I will post a link below to this map. It's very cool. All you do is just enter the network code, and it'll show you all stations within the network. It's pretty cool. And so pretty much in this case, you just enter AV in the network and then click update map. And I'll show you all the seismic stations within that network and the codes associated to them. Now for this one, we will pick VNSS, my favorite station for Vinyaminov. Let's try to find it real quick. Let's try to find it. Come on. Here is Vinny right here. Yeah, it's a very big, very big volcano, guys. VNSS. Now when I click more information right here. A page will open showing all information about this station. Now we have all four seismic codes that we need. By the way, guys, I do this many times a day. The four seismic codes we need is AV for the network code, VNSS for the station code. Look to the most recent epoch. Look at the channels. Dash dash is the location code with EHZ. Armed with those four codes, let's go to the Iris Data Select URL Builder. <clears throat> I said the past two days, right? Okay, right now it is, let's see, 21 UTC would be 1, 20 would be 12, so that's, it's about 1930 UTC right now on the 22nd. I'm just going to say 1930, past two days. Let's go to the 20th at 1930, just to get a full, complete two days. Now we have two days right here. Remember the four codes that we needed, AV, VNSS, dash dash, EHZ. Now we press this and download the data. And it should download. There we go. It's downloaded. By the way, this Iris Data Select URL builder should be down below in under resources in the description box. And by the way, it is awesome. This is the complete seismic archive for most of the seismic stations in the United States and most of them in the world. Probably half of them in the world. But all of the United States seismic stations are in the Iris network. Actually, except for a few networks in California, NC and BK. Those ones you have to get from this one, the NCDC data builder. But it's very easy to find all that data. Here we are, in the seismic program swarm. Let's open that file that we just downloaded for station VNSS right at the base of Vinyaminov. Let's see what it is showing us today. I already showed in a few videos back all the harmonic tremor episodes. All right. Let's see what we see, shall we? Okay, so let's go to the most recent data as of right now, which is 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time, November 22nd, 2018. By the way, happy Thanksgiving, guys. I hope you're having a very good Thanksgiving. Here is the harmonic and volcanic tremor episodes. Now, remember, harmonic tremor, there would be perfectly spaced waveform oscillations. So these right here could possibly be labeled as harmonic. And a lot of times, if any, you mean off, because this has happened even years ago. <clears throat> but, is it possible that it is building towards a larger eruption? Possibly. I don't know. But the scientists have already confirmed that this is a low-level continuous seismic tremor, both with harmonic and non-harmonic 
characteristics. For example, here we see almost equally spaced mini harmonic waveforms right there. But right here, not all of them are equally spaced. Do you notice that? So there are m many, many different types of tremor and earthquake events that are occurring at Benjaminoff. They say one possibility for some periods of the tremor is multiple low frequency events occurring in just such rapid succession you can't even distinguish between them, you know, like pretty, pretty much like one every second or something like that. But yeah, it's going pretty strong. Remember, let me go over here. Look, <clears throat> okay, this is what you got to watch out for. Let's look at the dominant frequencies real quick. This is what harmonic tremor looks like. Whoops, I did that wrong. Let me, nope, that is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Look at the dominant frequencies. Notice the highest spike, the dominant frequency on the spectral plot is showing, I'm going to say, let's see, this is 2 hertz right here. This is 1 hertz. So I'm going to say maybe about 1.75 hertz to about 1.8 hertz. Harmonic tremor episodes happen between about 1 to 3 hertz, but usually dominant frequencies never go past 5 hertz. That's what we are seeing right here. Let's go along. You can see a drop in frequency there. It, go, it, it does go up and down, but it mainly stays. Notice how it is mainly staying within the 1 hertz range. You notice that? Notice that right there? It's mainly, the dominant frequencies are mainly staying in the 1 hertz range. Okay, so we know that that is harmonic tremor. Again, whoa, whoopsie. Let's go here. You can see that right there. This is what harmonic tremor events and volcanic tremor events look like, guys. Now, there is also another type of volcanic or harmonic tremor sequence that does happen just prior to large eruptions that looks much different from this. That is a different sequence. Do not confuse that with low-level continuous tremor that goes on for months and months. Because, guys, this has been going on for months now since the, I think about, what was it, September 2nd of this year, I believe. So, what is that? That's, that's almost three months, guys. Wow. So this has been nearly consistent for the past three months. And it's not just me saying this, guys. It is the Alaska Volcano Observatory that talks about this. Look at how strong it was right here. Look at that. Look at the amplitude count right there, guys. Look at that. Holy crap. Now this is an example of harmonic tremor. This is a perfect example of very strong guys check that out this is zero amplitude count this is 5,000 that's I'm gonna say 8,000 to almost 10,000 do you know how strong that is for a harmonic tremor episode that is very very strong wow yep look how red that is the power is very strong right there oh wow actually I have never seen it this strong I've been aiming up before and again look at the near perfect waveform spacings almost near perfect and it looks like you had a break in the tremor sequence up here. Check this out. I went down to 2,000 amplitude count, but over here it goes to about 8,000 maybe or so. Man, that's crazy. Look at that. It doesn't seem like they are getting many actual high-frequency earthquakes. They're, many low, they're actually just low-frequency earthquakes that are occurring right now. Man, it's definitely, I think, let's go to the most recent data real quick. I just want to look at it at the end real fast. Oh, what is this right here? That's interesting. Okay, so right here, look at that. Okay, so that's going to, the most recent is going to about 1,000 amplitude count. So I think this is not stopping, guys. This is not stopping. It waxes and it wanes, but it, it it's not it's not stopping, guys. So is this heading towards another eruption? Because these eruptions, these ash eruptions that went to about 13,000, 15,000 feet have not subsided this tremor. When you know that this eruption will be over, this tremor will pretty much stop, just like it did at Kilauea. Kilauea, of course, had a different type of tremor, because every volcano is different. It's like a fingerprint, right? Everybody, not one person has, supposedly, not one person has the same fingerprint. So, wow, guys, that was pretty crazy. And at least you have a good example of what harmonic and volcanic tremor looks like. Remember, harmonic and volcanic tremor usually have dominant frequencies around 1 to 3 hertz, rarely ever going above 5 hertz. That is one sign that you can use. Now remember, there are many, many different types of tremor and earthquakes that can be generated by magma. Now it all depends on the process and what is going on beneath the volcano. 
Here we are at isthisthingon.org slash yellowstone slash daythumbs.php. So, guys, Steamboat just erupted for the 28th time of 2018. It happened at about 2.10 UTC, November 22nd, 2018. Which, remember, guys, is also 7.10 p.m. Mountain Time, November 21st, 2018. It needs to erupt one more time to match, and two more times to beat the record of 29 eruptions in one year, which occurred in 1964. As of 2018, I am pretty sure Steamboat is the largest active geyser in the world. That's why it can produce such strong ground vibrations that can be detected on seismic stations close to the eruption. Here's seismic station YNM, SHC channel, meaning that there is, uh, just for this, just for this station, there was a 1 hertz high pass filter added. That's just for this station, guys. This is a fake SHZ channel. And you can see the steamboat eruption right there. Let me go to YNR real quick. Here is YNR. It barely showed the eruption, if at all. I'm pretty damn sure it didn't. Um, but you can see there were some earthquakes around this time period. YNR is showing a YNM. The one that's closest to steamboat didn't show these microquakes very much. But you go to YHH, you can see it here on YHH. Check that out. Isn't that interesting? So there was a micro swarm. What is that? Look at the background activity. You see that? Up here the lines look more straight. Down here they look a lot more wiggly. That's weird. Okay, I'll check that out in just a bit actually. But there was a swarm that preceded and occurred during the steamboat eruption. And it seems, based on the seismic stations in the area, that it occurred somewhere possibly west of uh, Steamboat Geyser. I don't know. So it appears that the steamboat eruption was barely detected, if at all, on the YNR station. YNM usually shows it the best. Just like the most recent eruption, this one was weaker than what we have seen in 2018, but also lasted longer. And it seems the length of time is directly connected to the strength of the eruption. At least that's what it seems like. Again, this eruption happened about a day early, since steamboat eruptions have recently been occurring almost once per week. And I found that interesting, especially since you can clearly see that there was... An earthquake swarm, you can see that on YHH here, that occurred just prior and during the steamboat eruption, but it barely showed on YNM for some strange reason. Were these microquakes connected to yesterday's steamboat eruption? Who knows? But why don't we go take a look at the data, shall we? Here we are at the Yellowstone page at volcanoes.usgs.gov. Let's scroll down real quick. You can see they did report it right here, 7.10 p.m. Mountain Time on November 21st. Okay, so let's real quick, so we have the seismic data, let's just real quick look at the water data real quick for the Tantalus Creek, or is it stream? Yeah, creek. I'm pretty sure, is a creek the same thing as a stream? I forget. But here's the discharge, you can see the last spike was on November 15th when Steamboat last erupted. These, uh, usually it's, Steamboat causes initial, very quick, instantaneous spikes, guys. The Steamboat would not cause these slower wider more drawn out spikes these seem more like rain because really we did not see seismic traces at all during these days the last seismic trace that i can confirm was for november 15th so on november 15th it erupted and then yesterday it erupted and here is it right here here's the gauge height in feet you can see both eruptions right there here we are at the iris data select url builder which is the iris seismic archive now let's download the past day of seismic data from station YHH, YNM, the station closest to Steamboat Geyser, and YNR, the only other station in the park ever to register a steamboat eruption, besides YNM. So let's enter them in. Let's do YHH. Oh, what am I doing? I screwed up. WYYHH. There we go. 01HZ. Let's go down right now. We want the past day of activity right now. It's 11.43 a.m. Pacific Time, November 22nd, 2018. I'm just going to put 2000 just to top it off real quick. All right, we got that. Now we want YNM. And remember, there is no SHZ channel. It's actually HHZ with a 1 hertz high pass filter. That's why it says SHZ. It's a very special thing that they do for Yellowstone. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they won't just put in actual short period monitors, but... Maybe that's just me. So, now we have it downloaded. So let's go to Swarm real quick and check all of this data out. As you can see, we're in the program Swarm, and I have opened YHH, YNM, and YNR. So real quick, let's do YNM first and take a look at the steamboat eruption this time. Remember, if you want to see my reasonings as to why this is just surface 
uh, vibrations, not the actual free flow of superheated water leading to an eruption, but that this is actually just surface vibrations, then please go visit my website on my Seismo blog. Go to the October archive part on my blog, and you should see recent Steamboat Geyser analysis, and I talk about the reasonings why this is just surface vibrations. <clears throat> okay, let's do persistent rescale off. Let's do a high pass enabled 0 0.8 hertz filter. Press OK. All right, we got that. Let's zoom all the way out to take a look at this eruption real quick. Here's the start. There's initial burst of eruption. Seemed to have calmed a little bit and then started to increase once again. And you can see it increasing. There's a little bit of discrepancy with the data flow, sadly. And you can see it right there. Let's zoom out a little bit more just to kind of get the whole eruption. This is what the whole eruption looked like, guys. Right here. Let me get it. There it is. That's the whole steamboat eruption, the 28th eruption. Notice it barely goes past 20,000 amplitude count, which is very small, actually. I think the smallest other eruption was about 50,000 amplitude count. So this was a very small steamboat eruption. Well, it still was a pretty large hydrothermal eruption, but for steamboat in 2018, it's pretty small. If you know what I mean. But it did last. It lasted longer than that, uh, than an hour, guys. Man, let's see. It probably went almost two hours, I'm guessing. Maybe a little less than two hours. Maybe an hour and a half. That's very long. And there's the spectrogram for the event right there. Again, notice the high frequencies. Let's look at the spectral plot just real quick. And there we go. Here's the spectral plot. Notice the dominant frequencies at about... 32 and a half to 33 hertz goes down right about there so that's very interesting now let me and it seems let me go here seems like there was a little bit of an earthquake oh yeah remember there was a swarm going on during this time period but they barely showed some of them just barely showed so let's real quick click out of this and let's go to ynr uh, what the hell? What is going on? Hold on a second. Look at that background activity. That looks familiar. Okay, so real quick, I'll go take a look at that in just a second. But real quick, let me look at 210. Let's zoom all the way out. All the way out, guys. And let's take a look. The spectrogram 210 should be right here. It looks like you can see just barely the start of the steamboat eruption but you can't really see anything else in past eruptions it was showed up pretty well on ynr this one just barely showed if at all so let's click out of that but there was a microquake swarm going on during this time period and let me look at this for yhh remember how i said the background no wow okay i want you to notice a difference just notice something real quick See how just wavy that is? Which to me, it's very weird for YHH. Okay, remember that right there. Now let me go back a little bit and go up here. Go down here. Go up here. Go down here. Something is going on. Uh-oh, I think that long distance vibration is happening again. I'll check that in just a second. Here's an earthquake. Part of the earthquake swarm. Definitely looks like a low frequency earthquake, actually. Let's take a look at the spectra real quick. And definitely not a low frequency earthquake, but it was very odd looking though. <laughs> let's go back. Let's take a look at some of the other quakes real quick. If it'll let me. That is the weirdest quake I have ever seen in my life. These are some weird looking earthquakes, guys. What the? There's lots of them too. I gotta say, maybe there's let's see one, two, three, four, five, maybe about 15, 20 of them. And this was during the steamboat eruption, guys. Remember, the steamboat eruption would have happened right about, right about here, at about 210. So steamboat eruption happened in the middle of this microquake swarm. It wasn't that big. It definitely was not that big, but it still did occur. So it seems that steamboat has erupted for the 28th time. It is definitely looking like 2018 will be the most active year for Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin of Yellowstone. Now, there was also a large 4.1, more like a 4.5, earthquake in northwest Idaho and a pretty deep 5.7 earthquake near a few volcanoes in Alaska right around the time Vinny Aminoff started to increase in eruptive activity. Could it be related? That is well above my pay grade. Well, especially since I don't have a pay grade for doing this. <laughs> but first, I really want to check this out. This 
is looking a little familiar. I'm sure for all those who have followed my website for so long, or not my website, but my YouTube channel for so long, you can probably guess what I'm hinting at. I'm thinking it is that long distance vibration showing up once again. Okay, and if so, I will do a video. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not hallucinating, right? Like, this really increased that quick. Usually, it is a long, drawn-out increase, possibly over a day, or even 6 to 12 hours. But this increases almost instantly. Look at this. Look at this. What is that? Seriously, what the heck is that? All right, I'm going to go back. Let's look at some other charts real quick, just around the area. Ah, oh, I hate that chart. Um, let's take a look at TB Creek. Barely showing it. I don't even I don't even use these much. Let's go down to Newport. The ANSS stations are usually better for this. Notice not many squiggly lines. Many, many, many squiggly lines. I don't like those squiggly lines. Okay, really though. Look at this. Holy crap. Notice, barely anything up there, and then look throughout the day, it increases very fast, very, very fast. Now I want to do something real quick, let's go to the ANSS plots, the USGS ANSS plots real quick. I rarely ever use these guys, because I usually down, like to download my own data and generate my own plots, which of course you know can happen in a numerous amount of ways. Let's real quick check New Mexico. And there was an earthquake, so it is kind of hard to tell if that is related or not. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You can tell right here. Notice very thin lines. And as you go through the day, thickening of the lines. Remember, bandpass filter was added of 0.004 to 0.05 hertz. Remember, this long distance vibration or whatever it is occurs very low frequencies. So that is why it is able to be picked up on these. Usually these are only good for seeing distant global earthquakes, which a lot of people call teleseisms. Let's go to Indiana. Remember, just this right here is the earthquake, guys. Notice how before the earthquake occurred, how there's an increase right here. Notice the lines are thin up here, but they get thicker down here. I'm just doing this just to confirm that it's not just the mtex site that is seeing this let's go to alabama alabama is seeing an increase as well let's go down and guys this is just preliminary i just found out about this actually while i'm recording this video you can see an increase right here so i'm definitely going to do another video on this because it seems like it is getting very strong so please keep an eye out for a very large earthquake i don't know where it would occur but another large 7.0 8.0 maybe in the next week just keep an eye out for it and it seems every chart is showing this, guys. You can obviously see the earthquake that occurred, but still. Let's go down real quick. Yeah, so it is showing that long distance vibration is happening again, guys. Look at that. See how it increases? And, of course, that part is the earthquake right there. But still, you can still see an obvious increase. Let's go back to Swarm. Again, let's go to YNR. Look at this, guys. Let me try to put it in perspective for you. Let's do 60 minutes per line. See if that helps. Yep, it does. Check this out, guys. Look at this. All right, let me spread it out real quick. So everywhere, guys, multiple stations throughout the country, once again, are showing this. Look at this. You see an obvious increase. Huge increase, actually. Look at that. Let me zoom. Okay, up here, it's about, what's the amplitude count? About 400. Now let's go down here. That's almost a thousand. Okay, this is really happening. Look at the difference. Up here, it's much smaller. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows to almost 1,500 amplitude count. That is very strong for a vibration that carries dominant, really low frequencies that is showing across the whole country. It is happening again, guys. It is just starting. We are in the midst of it right now, right as we speak, right at 11.55 a.m. Pacific Time, November 22nd, 2018. It is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Let's real quick go on to my website, just real fast. Here we are on my blog on my website, just real quick. want to talk about the large Idaho earthquake and the deep Alaska earthquake. 
All right, Steamboat erupted for the 28th time just a little bit ago at the time of writing this. And by the way, I talk about the Steamboat 28th eruption, but I won't show that because we already talked about that. Now, it was not as strong as most 2018 eruptions, but lasted for quite a while. It was also preceded by a very small microquake swarm near the Norris area. The swarm actually occurred during the steam er Steamboat eruption too, but the quakes were very tiny. Maybe around negative 0.3 to 0.5, with the largest probably being around 0.9 or so. Idaho also saw a very strong earthquake, but not in Soda Springs. It was all the way on the opposite side of the state. Alaska also saw a large and deep 5.7 earthquake just as volcanic activity of Vinyamin off volcano in Alaska started to skyrocket. At 2239 UTC November 20th, 2018, which is also 339 p.m. Mountain Time, same date, a very strong 4.1 earthquake occurred in northwest Idaho, right near the border of Oregon and Washington. This earthquake, at the time of writing this, was submitted a total of 93 felt reports. Remember, not everyone knows where to report an actual earthquake. So when you see a felt total like this, it is highly likely many more people felt it. In my opinion, according to the data and submissions by other agencies, this earthquake really seemed more like a magnitude 4.5 or 4.6 at the max. It was pretty strong, guys. Pretty strong. The first image is obviously the event report from USGS. Now, the second image right here, it shows the location of the earthquake, the orange circle, and the location of the closest seismic station to this event, PLID in the IW network, marked by an orange triangle. You can see the city of Walla Walla, which resides in Washington State, just north of the Oregon border. This was a very odd location for an earthquake of this magnitude, just like the recent magnitude 4.1 that occurred under the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. How come such weird locations are seeing larger earthquakes as of late? Is there a quote-unquote seismic wave of energy passing us by? Could be, who knows? Now below are the seismic images of this event. First shown is the helicorder plot for station PLID, the closest station to this event. The seismogram spectrogram spectral plots will be shown after, and as always, please remember to read chart labels first before reading the data, and pay attention to any captions beneath any images that you see. So let's scroll down, here's PLID, BHZ, IW, 00, you can see the large 4.1 right there, which I believe was more like a 4.5, but who knows. And let's go down to the plot right here. This was a mighty powerful earthquake, guys. And in a strange location, too. This was a high-frequency earthquake with dominant mid to low frequencies. Check out how powerful the S waves are, guys. Sometimes they can represent a rise in strength and a drop in frequency, but this is crazy. The S waves were far stronger than the P waves. Look at that. You see that? Jeez. This was a pretty interesting earthquake, and I bet it really startled some people that lived in the area, especially since this area doesn't get large quakes like these very often, and they're not used to stuff like this. Magnitude 5.7 quake in Alaska during heightened volcanic activity of Benny Aminoff. At 1821 UTC, November 21st, 2018, which is also 1121 AM Mountain Time, same date, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake struck pretty deep at 145.5 kilometers in depth, 65 kilometers south, southwest of the famous Redoubt Volcano in Alaska, striking almost directly under the Iliamna Volcano. In the image above, which, right he which is right here, you can see this earthquake marked with a red circle. Now this earthquake did not occur very near the Vinyaminoff volcano, marked by a red triangle, but it did occur within about less than a day or so of volcanic activity skyrocketing at Vinyaminoff, pretty sure almost around the same time, which is weird. I'm not saying that it is connected, but the activity did increase around the same time as the large deep earthquake. I have no proof as of yet that they are connected, but it is very interesting nonetheless. I have talked about Vinny Aminoff on my YouTube channel once, even including seismic audio of its harmonic tremor sequence. So please go check that out. Just search my name on YouTube, go to my channel, click videos, and scroll through my videos. Vinny Aminoff has been in a state of unrest since September of this year, 2018. Without any breaks whatsoever, harmonic and non-harmonic, volcanic, tremor has been occurring at a constant rate. I mean, it would wax and wane throughout the days, but has been getting stronger lately. Now coinciding with ash emissions around 13,000 to 15,000 feet, drifting southeast about 100 miles to 150 miles or so. The activity does not seem to be stopping and is still increasing. Could a much, much larger eruption be approaching? Who knows? Well, let's get to the data of this 5.7. The first of the two images above, the first image is right here, 
is obviously the event page for the magnitude 5.7 earthquake. Although striking deep at about 145.5 kilometers, this earthquake was reportedly felt by 586 people. I know the image says 545, but the count was updated by the time I wrote this. That is only the people that reported feeling this, guys. Remember, not everyone reports feeling an earthquake to the USGS, so this was felt by a lot of people even though it was at about 145.5 kilometers in depth. In the image right here, you can see the location of the earthquake marked by an orange circle. Seismic station ILSW in the AV network, location marked by an orange triangle, was the closest seismic station to this event. I have downloaded the data for this earthquake and will post the helicorder and analysis plots directly below. Please remember, as always, that you must read chart labels first before you read the data. And please pay attention to any captions beneath any images that you see. <clears throat> now let's go down real quick. Here is the helicorder. It is down here. This was the 5.7 at 145.5 kilometers in depth. Let's go down to the plot right here. I will show the first part of it. There's actually four parts to this plot. Now check this out, guys. Remember how this station, ILSW, resides pretty much right at the epicenter of this earthquake? That means we should see some dominant high frequencies, right? After all, they say this was caused by oblique tectonic forces. Well, take a look at the spectral plot. I had to add two different spectral plots just to show you. You can even see this on the spectrogram, though. This 5.7 quake on a station right at the epicenter saw dominant frequencies below 5 hertz, but that is not the most interesting thing. This earthquake had dominant frequencies at about 1 to 1.5 hertz, guys. That is extremely low for any magnitude 5.7, even at 145.5 kilometers in depth. So did magma cause this? The professionals don't think so. But remember, magma can also cause tectonic activity too, and it did occur right around the same time Vinny Aminoff saw an increase in activity. Regardless, this was a very weird earthquake. So what's up with the weird earthquakes lately? And by the way, here's the second spectral plot right here. You can see obvious dominant frequencies right about 1 hertz to 1.5 hertz, and it goes down from there. Yeah, very interesting, guys. You can also see that on the spectrogram here. I, it's not really a low frequency earthquake, but it does have dominant frequencies below 5 hertz, right around 1 to 1.5 hertz. So I find it's very odd. And the rest of this po blog post is about the steamboat eruption, which we already talked about. You can come check that out if you want. Well, activity seems to be increasing in some weird areas lately. Vinny Aminoff is seeing some large eruptions, and currently is pretty much the only volcano erupting anywhere in the United States. But look at the recent volcanic eruptions elsewhere in the world. How come the mainland of the United States has not seen anything close to volcanic activity since Mount St. Helens in 1980 and 2004-2006? Well, except for the Yellowstone Lake event in 2008-2009. Even the professionals admit this probably was the first geophysical observation of a failed volcanic event within the Yellowstone volcanic field. I mean, there were so many low-frequency events going on, guys, with hundreds of VT quakes and even an explosive earthquake right under the lake. Yeah, it was a pretty crazy swarm that started to worry the professionals, but it calmed down after about seven days or so. Thank God, otherwise I may not be standing here recording this right now. Yes, guys, that could have happened within only about seven days. That is pretty much the warning we would get when something would erupt, guys. Sometimes Mount St. Helens gave us like six months to maybe a year's worth of a warning. So other volcanoes give us years and years of warning. Other volcanoes only give us a week. And other volcanoes pretty much erupt with no warning at all. So it's really hard to tell which volcano will give us a warning and which will not. Steamboat did erupt for the 28th time of 2018. Again, it only needs to erupt two more times before the year ends to make this the all-time yearly record. Can you imagine what the total will be for 2019 if this pattern continues throughout all of the next year, erupting at about once per week? If so, that would be about 52 eruptions in one year. Yeah, that would be absolutely astounding. Steamboat eru has erupted like this many times before, but has never erupted more than 29 times in a single year. There have also been many years in a row that it didn't erupt at all. Do you think it'll stay active, or will it suddenly stop somewhere down the line like it has before? Regardless, this is an interesting time to be alive if you like volcanoes and earthquakes. I hope you all have a great day, and remember the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. I know you hear me saying that a lot, but there is really a lot of truth to that statement. 
God bless, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to check out Scott's new channel, The NW Geology Guy, and visit my website, https colon slash slash monitor seis .com. The link to it is below in the description box underneath my email address, and every other link is either under links below the parts or in the resources section. You, you guys should always check the description box for any links, any resources, any parts. Always check my description boxes, guys. I always fill it up with a bunch of goodies. Have a great day, and let's pray for some snow in Seattle. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Merry Christmas. Oh, wait. It's not Christmas. It's Thanksgiving. Woohoo. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.